From the curtain hanging on a window to a fully clothed, entirely CG character, cloth in CGI can be a complex challenge and tricky to get right. And despite the use of some similar software, these fabrics aren't being cut and styled by an up-and-coming streetwear designer fresh out of a New York Fashion Institute. They're created by highly talented and overly caffeinated VFX artists. In many cases, for cloth to be believable, it needs to run through many steps, and often, many artists. As with most 3D assets, it first needs to be modeled, then textured, and shaded, and finally simulated in order to move in a convincing way. Let's jump into the different techniques used by masterful VFX artists to craft these visual threads. We'll explore the softwares being used, what a day in the life of a 3D character artist looks like, and what the future has in store for 3D fabric and clothing. I'll also provide some really useful resources and links in the description below to help you become a proper CGI seamstress, if that's the kind of thing that you're into. So there are three major steps involved in creating a successful garment, modeling, shading, and simulation. There are other factors that can help sell the illusion of cloth and fabric, but these three are ultimately the most important. There are typically two approaches to modeling clothes, either box modeling and sculpting it, or simulating the cloth fold. And in all honesty, in most cases, a combination of both is required. When it comes to box modeling and sculpting, an artist will typically start by blocking in shapes in a modeling DCC like Maya or Blender, and then bring that into a sculpting software, usually ZBrush, in order to sculpt some fold details to make it feel more natural. This usually works better for stylized clothes, where the folds and the sculpts don't need to be super duper realistic. On the other hand, when modeling by simulation, an artist would instead use a software such as Marvelous Designer, which allows you to draw two-dimensional fabric cutout patterns, so you can roleplay as a Parisian fashion designer, and then run a simulation to have it all fall into place on your 3D character while creating realistic folds as it settles. Sometimes it'll settle in an awkward position, so you can kind of pull, pull, tug it to get it to sit the way that you prefer. There are plenty of parameters at your disposal to find the right look before hitting the catwalk, whether it be rigid, flexible, flowy, fluffy, stretchy, or puffy. Once you've got a convincing model and proved to the world that you know how to put a fit together, it's onto texturing and shading. Typically, you'd rely heavily on tileable textures to produce a base texture for your asset. From there, materials are built from texture maps in 3D softwares like Maya, Blender, and Houdini by piping them into a shader that allows you to dial in the look of the physical material and essentially decide how it would respond to light. Meaning, so this is where you would decide if the fabric is kind of metallic, like nylon, or glossy, like latex, matte, like cotton, or how bumpy it should be, and should there be a strong sheen, like a velour, or once the look's been dialed in, it's onto simulation. Many DCCs have their own approaches to solving cloth simulation. Whether it be Houdini, C4D, or Blender, each of them have cloth solvers used to simulate realistic cloth. The solvers used to simulate cloth are typically the same used to handle muscles, skin, and hair. And recently, Vellum and Houdini has kind of been a go-to for simulating cloth in the industry. The way it's done there is by importing the animated character, isolating the cloth, and simulating based on set parameters and constraints. Creating a blend from a T-pose to the character so that you can start by letting the cloth fall and settle naturally at rest, and then fold into action over the course of the shot. You then pipe in whatever geometry you'd want your cloth to collide with, which includes the character's own body and maybe some floors or tables that it might brush up against. Dial in some parameters to specify how your material should behave, whether it's dense, stretchy, stiff. You decide what external forces you might want to affect it, like really turbulent wind, and then kick off a simulation and wait, and wait longer and then just when you think it's done, keep waiting. Until eventually, one day, your simulation is done, and that's it. You've got some pretty believable clothes. While many larger studios prefer to simulate everything in Houdini, it's entirely possible and some prefer to simulate directly in Marvelous Designer. In fact, a largely praised show like The Witness from the first season of Love, Death, and Robots did all of their cloth simulations that way, and they look incredible. Most artists in the industry were completely stumped when that show came out and thought that it was likely live-action, real clothes that were just painted over, until they came out with breakdowns revealing that it was actually created using Marvelous Designer. And before you ask, no, we aren't sponsored by any of these cool softwares, but feel free to help us get us there by subscribing to our channel for more CG-related content. At the studio level, cloth is usually handled by multiple different artists across a few departments. Typically, you'll have a modeler model the clothes, and a texture look dev artist that handles texturing and shading. And then you'll usually have a CFX artist, which stands for character effects artists, and they'll be the ones handling the cloth simulation. CFX artists are also generally responsible for simulating hair, fur, and muscles, pretty much anything on a character that might need some kind of simulation. So let's start where every artist's day begins, without fail, at the coffee machine. When they finally return to their desks, 
a character artist would check their task management software like Shockgrid and see what's assigned to them. If their supervisors and coordinators are doing their jobs, then they would have also received a bunch of concept and reference to help guide the artist on a clear path of what their work should look like. In some cases, they might even receive a LiDAR scan or photo scanned rough mesh of an actual physical piece of clothing that they're meant to match. This is sometimes useful for starting point. They'd then begin modeling and usually submit a turntable of their work for review in dailies where a boodle of picky supervisors would kindly point out all the little flaws that they notice and really rack their brains trying to nitpick every little detail they possibly can where a passionate production coordinator will transcribe and do their very best to interpret and hopefully not butcher the notes given by the supervisors for future reference and safekeeping. This process is repeated for a few days until the model is approved, passed downstream, and the artist will move on to their next task. A texture and look dev artist would then pick up the asset and begin to paint it and shade it, adding texture to the model and dialing in the material properties on the shader to get it to react properly to light. In turn, they'll also go through the same dailies and retake cycle until their portion of the work is complete and the asset is ready to once again be passed down. Eventually, it'll reach the CFX artist who would bring in the animated and clothed asset for every shot that they get assigned to, and they'd begin to set up constraints, CFX rigs, material properties, and whatever else they need to set up the simulation for each article of clothing that needs to be simmed. They'd then cache that out, usually on a render farm, quality check a render in dailies, where they'd often go back and forth re-simming, fixing issues, usually related to pesky interpenetrations or assets being out of sync with animations, and ultimately get approval and passed on for final lighting and compositing. As mentioned before, since clothes are essentially just standard 3D models, you can create many garments in any typical CG software like Maya, Blender, or C4D, whatever you're comfortable with, or whatever the studio you're working at forces you to use. And then you'd likely do an additional sculpting pass in ZBrush or maybe Blender. And while even though you would typically be simulating the larger cloth folds later on in another software, you'd often want to sculpt in some smaller detail folds directly into the model ahead of time. If you're modeling a cartoon character, this might be easier to handle since you're not looking to create hyper-realistic simulated cloth folds. When it comes to simulating realistic clothing, and frankly if you want a more pleasant experience modeling clothes, Marvelous Designer has become the industry's go-to. It'll allow you to design your clothing patterns the same way as the pants you're currently wearing, or at least the ones I hope you're currently wearing. From there, you can stitch it together and start simulating it, rolling up the sleeves and generally placing and getting it to fall right in real time. It provides a very realistic base to start from, where you can then pull it into other softwares and add further detail. When it comes to texture work, Mari and Substance Painter are usually what artists navigate to. Mari is fantastic for very high resolution close-up characters because of how well it handles very complex high resolution assets and textures. Whereas Substance shines due to its procedural nature that allows you to get a great base very quickly. Oftentimes, a texture painter will even create a tileable fabric pattern using Photoshop or procedurally creating them in Substance Designer's node-based workflow that allows you to create procedural tileables with ease. For simulation, Houdini is an industry-wide standard and is a powerful simulation software to push the fluidity of your cloth to perfection. It's used across the industry for every kind of simulation, be it cloth, smoke, fluid, grains, particles, etc. Vellum, Houdini's cloth solver, offers all the settings that you need to transform a single piece of geometry into a flowy coat, dress, or whatever fabric that you're working on. And really many like to keep their cloth specific simulations directly in Marvelous since it's very intuitive and easy to get set up quickly with very convincing results out of the box. If you're wanting to get into cloth simulation and more specifically if you're trying to get into the VFX industry as a CFX artist I'd absolutely recommend learning Houdini's Vellum and Marvelous Designer as that'll typically be the highest in-demand skill set that recruiters will be looking for. They're also frankly just the best tools for the job where often other solvers fall flat and aren't all that intuitive to get working properly. We aren't seeing a ton of AI seeping into this workflow yet, definitely at the concept stages we're starting to see AI generated clothing, uh, the massively talented prompt artist to ask Midjourney to spit out red summer dress with dragon print, satin fabric, realistic, fashion editorial. All of his producers praise and clap and send the generated amalgamation to the poor unsuspecting modeler to get things going. Once it hits the modeler, I imagine at some point we might see tools that generate some clothing patterns and we're already seeing some tools like Meshi that can generate fully created 3D models directly, but the results are, well, underwhelming. For now, although I'm certain we'll be seeing some major advancements there in no time. When it comes to texturing, we're seeing some AI usage to get a base fabric pattern. A few AI image generators are really great at producing tileable fabrics or design print patterns that can be used as a base to create PBR textures for clothing. And who knows, maybe Sora will eventually create fully realistic art directable shots of clothed characters acting out perfectly to specific prompts with consistent characters between shots. But until then, we'll be here modeling, UVing, painting, shading, rigging, animating, simulating, lighting, rendering, and compositing shots until our eyes water and our wrists tire. If you're looking to up your game in the CGI fashion department, here are a few resources to help you all. Marvelous Designer offers a plethora of awesome tutorials on their YouTube channel. Their websites also have some insightful videos
videos to show you different techniques and new features of the software. Again, YouTube offers an endless amount of tutorials by various channels. If you're looking for some fabric textures to get your own clothing project started, Texture.com, Polygon, Quixel all have plenty of textures to get you up and running quickly. If you're already using Substance Painter or Designer, they have a built-in library with really a ton of scanned fabrics to start from. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to watch our other videos in the series covering how CGI in movies are created by talented artists and subscribe to get notified of our next one.